Barnes here in Saginaw, Michigan. It's great to have you here with me today. You know, in the, in the fields and waterways of Michigan, Gil and myself have put together a nice collection of arc pecking stones. Uh, these were used by the Native Americans to produce uh, stone tools that were important in daily life. The axes, the adds, the, uh, the uh, mauls, the celts, the gouges, and what may be, many call portable art in the form of effigies are an integral part of the woodworking toolkit. Well, except the effigies. Every, it was important to daily life to have these tools. And before looking at the collection, um, I have a, a short video clip to show you. It features my friend and mentor, Jerry Wagner, who passed in the early 1990s. He was an awesome man. Uh, within this amazing clip, uh, Jerry shows a, a large effigy that was in his collection. And he explains about arc packing and how that effigy was made, which could be applied to, well, any, any piece that was art made by that uh, process. As I said, the clip is only a minute and a half long, shot in 1985. It, the, the video that I have, the source video, is like the fourth or fifth generation. So the picture quality is not the greatest, but I was able to clean up the audio quality somewhat. So let's take a look. This stone is, uh, has been radiocarbon tested, the associated materials with it, um, by the University of Michigan. It's between 2,500 and 2,000 years uh, ago that uh, primitive man uh, carved this into a Thunderbird motif. And you found that where? This was found about six miles north of Black River. Um, it's in the lower extremity of what uh, of the Austinese area. And the Austinese area has been uh, uh, heavily uh, uh, dug and researched for artifacts. And Austinese itself means Timmy stone. Hmm. And so late. The archaeologists were in there early, but later, later on, I happened to come across this, and it, uh, it made me feel real good that I did get in on some of the artifacts that had been uh, picked over for the last 30, 40 years up there, you know, in the, at the university. This, this is, is one uh, that they did, and uh, it was overlooked by the other archaeologists and the pot hunters. And then, the one I is incomplete. Uh, it might be in a, in a deity that they worship. Uh, with incomplete eye or something happened that they didn't uh, complete it. And it's done with an arc pecking method. It's taken another stone and a braiding with this mm -hmm. in here. And if, uh, as a matter of fact, I did this one over. I hope you enjoyed that, friends. I still miss Jerry a lot. Let's take a look, though, at the collection now that I have put together. Twelve stones that were used in arc pecking. And there is uh, this stone, which uh, was also used. I'll tell you about that more in a minute. And then this really cool uh, braider that was used to smooth the finished product. And then I have several examples of uh, stones that were produ produced using that method. So having said that, let's, uh, let's take a closer look at these pieces. Here in Michigan, the arc packing method was used um, probably from the late archaic on into the early woodland and then, you know, to the other woodland periods. Uh, cut, they were used for cutting down trees. The arc packing technology was used uh, during the late archaic and during the late woodland, or excuse me, early woodland here in Michigan, and it was probably used in successive woodland periods up until the contact time with the first Europeans. Uh, many things were made, as I said, um, with these with this method, like the axe or celt, and celt just being an ungrooved axe, basically. And it was used for cutting down trees as well as processing plant food and objects objects of carved bone and shell for both implements and for ornaments. To make a grooved axe, the Native American man uh, shaped a metamorphic or igneous rock by slowly pecking away. Uh, bits of the surface and then smoothing it with an abras abrasive material like sandstone. Now, <clears throat> here, this heavy piece, here's a prime example of an effigy that was produced with arc pecking. And you can see the pecking scars all along here, here, and here. Well, and here too. 
But to me, this represents a bear. And if you look at it really closely, you can see the snout here of the bear, the uh, eye here, and the other eye. And then as the snout comes up to the bear's forehead, uh, and everything again is done by arc packing on this. Um, so that's a, that's a heavy piece, a really cool piece. Now, looking at the stones that were used, this is the largest one that I have. And you can see these, will, these are all pointed on one end. And they were used to peck at stone in uh, you know, a manner like this. And they would continue doing this. And it must have been a laborious work. But look at, see, I already made. Check that out. So you can see how it was done. And it was really cool. I wonder how, you know, they were ingenious and, and inventive people. Now, the second one I have here is a little bit smaller. It has a rounded tip, but it had been pointed at one time. It's obviously, it was used quite a bit. Uh, it's a really cool piece. Um, this one is a little bit unusual. As you see, it has a curvature to it that way. And, uh, but it still has that, that point. And then it also has a somewhat sharpened edge along here, which could have been, I don't know how, what that would have been used for an arc pecking, but it would have been a good scraper. But it's definitely an arc pecking stone. Here is another one. This one I really particularly like. Uh, it, you know, they're, honestly, they are probably pieces that were broken off from, uh, that were waste product from the production, production of tools that were slightly modified to have the tip on it to use. So here's another one. And this one, I just think this is really cool how it's made. And you know what? A lot of collectors don't even see these when they're out because they're looking for the pretty stuff. The arrowheads and the spearheads and the axes and such. These are just as significant to life in, in those woodland villages as was any as was any axe or anything. Because without these, you couldn't make the axe, right? Here's another. Now this one is really cool and unusual because, I don't know if you can see that, it has these inclusions in the stone, which is, almost gives it a sandstone-like feel. Uh, yeah, sandstone-like feel. <clears throat> now, used for arc pecking, it can all, these side, the sides of it could also be used for abrading because of the inclusions within it. Very nice piece. Very nice piece indeed. It's another little one. Another little one. Another very little one. But, you know, they had to do some, uh, some uh, intricate work. And so these little pieces were were just as viable and usable as important as these other, you know, the, the bigger ones. Now this is a unique one because, you know, the the the, guy, the Indian that was or the Native American that was using that would have held it along the top here, and you could use like a hammer-like motion to. Um, I just chipped the point. <laughs> okay, but. You get the idea. Now this one, I'm not 100% certain on. I believe it could have been used as for arc packing because of the point on it. But there is a nice little fossil uh, brachiopod on there. And that probably would have attracted them. Um, but it, like I said, it was. Uh, I believe it was used for arc packing. But I could be mistaken on that one. But... I don't think so, but I've been mistaken once or twice in life on other things. So, just kidding. So it could happen here. This piece, uh, it comes down to a point, a beveled point here where it's been used. You can see the, war, the wear pattern on it. And this, I believe, would have been used in breaking stone, the raw, the raw pieces of stone, to get the right shape, uh, general shape, um, for the device that was being produced nice piece. This is uh, uh, granite and they didn't say about this one in the beginning is it is a nice pink granite. So I should wash these up. I have a tendency to leave artifacts in the condition that I found them in but I may just 
you know, wash these few things up. Okay. To smooth, now, if you've ever seen uh, an axe or a selt um, or some other tools, they are really, they don't look, usually they don't look rough at all. They use an abrader to, to smooth, to smooth it out. They would use perhaps sand with this and use it like as a, you know, a sander. Um, they also used, I read, uh, a rawhide. Um, and they would use that with sand to do the final finishing touches and make it a really beautiful piece. This is one of my favorites, so I, and it has a groove across here. Not sure what that was for, but a very nice abrader stone. Very nice. Now I'm going to give you a couple examples of um, uh, finished pieces that were found uh, on a field. And uh, let's start with this. Well, these two. These are both granite. This is a red granite. This is a blackish granite. These are discoidules. I think that's how you say it. And these were used in a game that the Indians played in, uh, that was called ch Chunky. Chunky. And we don't know a lot about the game of Chunky, but uh, Catlin did a painting, which I hope you're seeing right now, which shows Mandan Indians playing Chunky. It was throughout the country, or what would be the United States, that Chunky was played. Uh, from here in Michigan, uh, way out to the west, way down to the south. Oh yeah, from to the east. <laughs> very nice pieces, very nice pieces. But a lot of people would overlook that and not recognize it. Some of them, though, that I've seen... Uh, and, or that I've seen pictures of, are absolutely gorgeous pieces, beautiful. But the Native Americans here, um, they did they did really nice work, uh, stonework act, actually. But but uh, it was uh, a little more primitive than in other parts of the country. Now this piece, I don't know what it is to be honest with you. It's notched here, 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 and here, and those notches were made by arc packing. And then here's the back of it. It's a black uh, black and white uh, granite. Really lovely piece. Now I suppose it wouldn't be stretching it too much <coughs> to <coughs> to see that, to be able to see that on those notches that this was bound with leather strap and used as a gorget. And I, I could really see it being used as that on either side. And then here we have Another piece that shows arc packing here, 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 and here, but it this edge is sharpened. So this was a uh, was a tool. Um, it could have been a hoe, it could have been a chopper, but arc packing was employed in part of the process to form this, and then pressure flaking was used to form the sharp edge here. So. That's what I had to show you. <clears throat> in, a, in, a, in a while, a short while, I'm going to be doing a, a video just on Chunky Stones and the game. So if you're interested in that, be sure you subscribe and uh, keep your eyes open for that one. That's what I've got for you today. I hope that you have enjoyed taking a look at this small collection. And uh, it's been great to have you here in my home. And I hope that you'll accept my invitation to come back here again soon. Um, you know, God bless each and every one of you. As you know, and don't forget, I love everyone behind the behind that monitor. And uh, God willing, I'll be back with you again real, real soon. See you all later.